1975. I was a freshman at uh, Jesuit High School, and the show was like on a Tuesday. And I got tickets, and uh, my mom said I had a dentist appointment so I could leave school. So I'm outside at the bus stop thinking, <laughs> I'm going to a concert. And uh, there's other kids that were going to go, but I went by myself in the daytime. My mom loaded me up with a big bag of M&Ms in case I got the munchies. And uh, I got in the show, and it was way up in the front. And uh, there was this woman behind me who kept rubbing up against me. I was like 15 years old, and uh, she was an older woman, you know, probably 21. <laughs> And uh, the concert's going on, and I'm having a good time, and I'm thinking, oh, you're friendly, and turn around and smile. And I was really bad with women anyway, but uh, when the drum solo came up, she started kissing me. And that led to more stuff, and led to more stuff, and led to uh, me having sex with her right there in the concert hall, around with a bunch of people around. And, you know, that's 1975. Nobody cared about that stuff. And... Uh, it was great, and she kept making out with me throughout the rest of the show. And then she, at the end, when the music died, she goes, "I love drum solos." I go, "I've changed." Yes, I love drum solos now too. <laughs> so I said, "Well, I guess I got to go." And uh, we walk out. I got. I said, "I got to go catch the bus." Well, where do you live? And I told him. I said, "Where do you live?" She said, "Salem." She worked at the <laughs> at the state hospital for the loony bin. <laughs> And uh, so I said, well, I'll give you a ride home. So we go to this truck, and, well, she continues other stuff in the truck in the front seat with her husband waiting outside, which I thought, wow, that's weird. And uh, he was really nice. They gave me a ride home. And I came in and took a pee and took my number down, and uh, she called me every day for, for about a year. Yeah, you know, where am I? I don't have a car. I, <laughs> and it was just kind of fun to have a, an experience like that. And, uh, <laughs> well, Kiss has always been special to me in the drum solo department. And that's another fun story. Uh, I had another fun story. Uh, I was 17, and my uh, step mom, stepmom, uh, my friend had a stepmom who was like, Really gorgeous, like the Charlie's Angels dark-haired woman and uh, Jacqueline Smith, I think it was. But she was a little bit bigger. Not much, but she drove this Opal GT sports car. And One day, I'm at my house, and this orange car pulls up, and she comes in, and she's got a red spandex jumpsuit on and nothing else under it. And it's like an anatomy lesson in, in red spandex. And... Uh, she goes, I can't read this letter from her stepson who joined the Air Force. Can you read this for me? And I thought, oh, sure. uh, wait a minute. Okay, I can read this. And as I'm reading the letter, she's coming in closer on me. I had long blonde hair at the time. It was really awesome. And uh, it worked for me. And uh, she's coming in on me, and you know, I was like, whoa. And I go, hey, uh, you want to go downstairs? I went downstairs in the basement here, and I cut my foot on some tuna can thing we use for a, a Y connector. I had to go to work that day at this. I was washing pots, the only job I had ever as a kid, washing pots at this town club that was a ladies' club by the Mac Club. And uh, the smell of grease and hollandaise sauce will never leave my memory. And uh, so I'm kissing her, and she said, I said, i got to go to work. She asked, she gave me a ride to work. And... Uh, she said, well, does your mom work? And I said, yeah, I'll come over about 9 tomorrow. So I was up like at 5 in the morning <laughs> and uh, waiting, and that lasted for the whole summer. And that year, um, I burnt my hair. Actually, a guy turned a flash pot on to watch me jump. I used to have long blonde hair. And uh, in one quick flash of a flash pot, I had no fingernails, no skin on it. all of my hands. My hair was like the first mullet. And uh, <laughs> I'll never get that smell out of my nose either. Burnt hair really smells. And after that, my social life whew, plummeted like the stocks in 1929. And, uh, well, my summer of fun was done. So um, 
that was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, the flash bot. It was the year I was, uh, my sophomore year going to junior year, and I had bought this tuna fish can flash pot at the magic shop downtown, which I don't even know if it's still there. It was next to uh, Eli's. I don't know if that's still there anymore. That was a club. Up the down staircase was there, I think, at the time. And uh, you put some, this flash powder, you bought a little bottle for like nine bucks, and then put it in there, and it was magnesium and gunpowder. And then you put this little wire between. It was, a, it was just a plug, you know, like you plug stuff in, like an electrical plug, mount it onto a little tuna can thing. And you put a piece of 20-gauge wire between that and that. You plugged it in, and you turned the switch on, and when the, the switch hit, it burnt the wire and it burnt the flash pot. Well, my hands were inside of it when that happened. And I uh, lost my football scholarship at Jesuit. So I had to change schools and go to Wilson. And that was a co-ed thing where I wasn't a big-time guy there. And the Jesuit, I was kind of like, you know, nifty guy. And uh, I had to call for my mom, wipe me when I was, you know, 16. And to boy, because I, I had blisters on my palm, but I still have no hair on my top of my hands. And uh, did I go to the hospital? No. I put some vitamin E on it and got back in the race. <laughs> But uh, that did a little number on my brain, and uh, people started looking at me weird, so I started acting that way, and uh, I made a career of it. And, uh, well, that's that story. (laughs) 